Awesome. Well, a great day to everyone. Welcome to our Thinking Local uh, interview series. Today we have a very special guest who does so much for our local Chino Valley community. And we've partnered with them on their upcoming community fundraiser. And we're here to learn more about the amazing program his organization provides to our community. Without further ado, welcome, Kevin. Good morning, everybody. Pleasure to be here with you today, Chris. Thanks for the opportunity to share a little bit of information about the Chino Neighborhood House today. Fantastic. Well, let's start. Um, if you can give us your name, your position, and your and your organization, please. Absolutely. I'm Kevin Cisneros. I am the board president for the Chino Neighborhood House, and it's uh, just a great organization to be a part of, and I feel blessed to have the opportunity to serve with our fantastic board of directors, just great people that many people know in the community, and uh, it's a great charity to be involved with, so I'm grateful for that. Fantastic. So what are you trying to raise the money for? We are uh, raising the money for uh, multiple things that we have happening this time of year. You know, throughout the year, we purchase groceries. Our primary um, goal is to provide grocery assistance to local low-income families in need. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. But uh, so we're always using our funds to purchase groceries to be able to donate for free to low-income families here in our community. But additionally, this time of year, we are working towards raising funds so that we can provide complete turkey meals that we can can give to those low income families that they can take home, bake that turkey in their oven, cook all those sides and host a beautiful Thanksgiving event for their family. And additionally, we have coming up here in December, our annual Christmas toy and bicycle giveaway where we give away free to hundreds of children brand new unwrapped toys and bicycles so that uh, they can experience Christmas this time of year as well. So there's a lot going on at the Chino Neighborhood House this time of year. Yeah, that's wonderful. <laughs> well, maybe give us a little bit of background about the Chino Neighborhood House and how it all got started. Uh, you know, the Neighborhood House got started way back in 1945 when a couple of school nurses saw a need in our community and started providing services from the trunks of their cars. So what a beautiful thing is that they started providing blank and clothing and canned goods just to the students that they knew needed a little bit of assistance. And, uh, you know, we've been running strong since then. Now we're a full nonprofit uh, with a board of directors. Uh, we even have a storefront located in Chino that allows our clients to come in and choose the groceries that they need. Um, and so, yeah, we've been around for quite some time, but there's still people in our community who have not heard about the Chino Neighborhood House. And we work hard to try to get the word out there so that people know to come to us when they have a need. And additionally, so that community members can uh, support our uh, nonprofit as well. You're absolutely right. And that's why we're doing this interview is to really get the story out there. For those that still haven't heard about the Chino Neighborhood House, well, maybe you could describe a little bit about the why of the Chino Neighborhood House um, for the people that don't, have never heard of you. You know, our why is just that, trying to provide grocery assistance to low to moderate income families who have a need in our community. We serve the Chino Valley Unified School District boundaries. So we're talking Chino and Chino Hills and a small portion of Ontario as well. And we get a lot of support from the community because of that. And, and our primary goal and our why is that we know that there are families and individuals in our area that fall upon hard times. And especially now, right, through a pandemic, or maybe it's just a normal time of job loss, divorce, sickness, anything like that. When they have that time of need, and sometimes it's short term, sometimes it's a longer term, we bring them in, we qualify them, we make sure that there's a need, and then we start providing grocery assistance to them immediately at no cost to them. Maybe you can give me a specific story of how the Chino Neighborhood House has impacted uh, individual family or, you know, as a community as a whole, please. Sure, absolutely. So, you know, in general, each month we are providing services to approximately 260 families and seniors in the Chino Valley. That is a total of approximately 775 individuals that are coming to the Chino Neighborhood House every single month to pick up groceries for free. And you all know that even trying to feed a family of four like I've got, it's not cheap. So when you're feeding a family and neighbors and friends of 775 people, definitely it takes a, that community support to make it happen. But one beautiful story that comes to mind is uh, we were out at a community event just raising awareness and we had a booth there and somebody came up to us and said, I'd like to donate some money to the Chino Neighborhood House. And we thought, wow, what a, what a great gift. We're just here trying to spread the word about our services. 
And she shared her story and it was this. She remembered as a child that there was a time when her parents need assistance and um, they were able to come to the Chino neighborhood house and get those groceries that they needed, get those hygiene items that they needed, everything that we provide. And now she's a thriving adult with a family of her own, able to come back full circle to the Chino neighborhood house to support us so that we can help another family in need, just like she remembered from her childhood. I thought that was a beautiful story. Oh, that's certainly very, very beautiful. It's, it's, it, you, it's good. I think it's very rewarding in your position to be able to reminisce on these types of stories. And I'm sure when you guys have your board meetings and you talk with the volunteers and stuff, these are the stories that they really gravitate to that makes them want to be involved in your organization. Well, you know, maybe you can tell us, I know you guys do the feeding program and the groceries. What other programs that the Chino Neighborhood House does offer? We try to really keep a pulse. We have a phenomenal admin at her store, at our store. Um, her name is Erica and she really has a pulse on our community and what the need is for our clients. Um, we are providing to our clients hygiene items, baby care items, brand new socks, of course groceries every month, um, and more. Those things, diapers, you know, primary needs in a household that are not cheap when you go to the store, we try to fill that gap. Um, if there's a senior who is in need of something specific, a mom or a dad or a grandmother in need of something specific, school supplies, backpacks, whatever those needs might be, we find a way to work with the community to bring those goods in and then give them out for free to people who really have a need in our community, our neighbors who are needing a little bit more assistance. And how would you say the Chino Neighborhood House is different from maybe other similar type of organizations out there? And I think it's just that we do customize our services for our clients. So all of our clients receive groceries every single month, right? And it's a lot of groceries. We're talking about beans, rice, sugar, of eggs, milk, when we have those things, but always cereal, pancake mix, syrup, uh, macaroni and cheese. I could just keep going. The list is huge of groceries that they get free every month from the Chino neighborhood house. But in addition to that, when we keep a pulse on what our clients need, we're able to customize our services, such as we'll celebrate with them a new birth in their family and try to provide some things that will help their family during that time of bringing a new baby home, right? Um, perhaps a loss in the family or a sad time like that. We'll do what we can to try to support them through that as well. Just little special touches. I really think separates us from some of the other organizations. There's a lot of great organizations around that help others and we partner with them too, which is very special. We try to come together as a collaboration to make beautiful things happen in the Chino Valley. We partner with the city of Chino. We partner with the city of Chino Hills, the police department, the fire district. At times, if there's um, a referral from the fire district where somebody has lost their house due to a fire, they will come to us at night. We will unlock our store. We will give them whatever they need to help them get through that time. So we really work closely with our local community to make sure that everybody is being taken care of, even if they're not a client. Somebody comes to us and they need help, we're gonna help them and ensure that happens. And to receive those referrals from our cities, they know that they can call us and refer to us individuals in need and that we will take care of them immediately. And I think that's special. That's very special. It's very high touch the type of service that you guys are providing. Being a nonprofit, I would say it's not uh, <laughs> uncommon but it's definitely something that differentiates you from all the rest of them because of the, the high touch service that you guys provide. And I'm sure with the high touch level of service that you guys are able to provide your clientele, it involves a, a, a whole lot of people to be able to accommodate a lot of those needs. How do you uh, let people get involved with what you guys do? Well, I'll tell you something that's unique about the Chino Neighborhood House as well is we are small but mighty. Um, we have a board of directors that really puts in a majority of the work to make um, everything happen when it comes to grant writing, getting out into the community to, to share the word, to operating the store. And we do that all with no salaries for any employees or board members, which allows us to keep our overhead extremely low, which means that 95% of all of the funds that we bring in goes right back into the community through grocery assistance, hygiene items, all of those items that I mentioned. And that's pretty fantastic. So how, do, how would people um, get involved, you. you know, volunteer? Thank or you, things, thank you. Yes. 
they can contact us. You know, we have a great website as well that allows people to find out more about the Chino Neighborhood House. And it's just ChinoNeighborhoodHouse.com. They can contact us there. They can call us at our store. Um, but we are always looking for, I don't want to say long-term um, volunteers, but people who can come and help us at our store. And we do have volunteers that will come alongside our store admin and be there to help with the clients when they come into store to choose the groceries that they need to offset what they don't have at home. So when we get that good volunteer, we, we find out what days can they come and be involved because that's helpful to us. Uh, we have local churches here and communities and service clubs that will jump in and go, what do you need done? Uh, we need to reorganize our storage facility. We need a new ramp built. That sometimes there's just little projects that we as a small board of directors can't manage ourselves and people, the community come in together to say, what can we do to help? And we get them plugged in that That's way. great. How do you feel that this partnership with Think and Local will help the Chino Neighborhood House with this fundraising effort? I wanna invite everybody to get involved with this fundraiser. This is a special fundraiser. And this is the first time the Chino Neighborhood House is hosting a fundraiser. Um, and it was brought to us through Think and Local. And we're really excited about this opportunity because it's gonna open up an opportunity for you our community members who want to find a way to help others to be able to go to a restaurant that you're already uh, dining at, go to a store that you're already shopping at, and have a large portion of that bill donated from Thinking Local and from the community partners that they've built back to the Chino Neighborhood House so that we can then use those funds to purchase groceries, to provide these you know, 200, 260 Thanksgiving dinners that we want to provide to buy the toys and bicycles. Um, all of these things are not donated to us or discounted to us. We have to buy them to provide them to our community. So your support through this opportunity is going to make that all possible. And again, I'm Kevin Cisneros, board president for the Chino Neighborhood House. And on behalf of all of our wonderful board members and our store admin, Erica, we want to invite you to be involved with this fundraiser. We invite our whole community to support the Chino Neighborhood House by thinking local. Thinking local, that's us and making things happen locally for our low-income families in need. Awesome. Well, it's been such a pleasure to speak with you and learn more about the amazing things that the Chino Neighborhood House is doing for the whole Chino Valley community. And I'm excited for your fundraiser and asking our whole community to please, please, please support their fundraiser by by, like what Kevin said, doing what you do every day and shopping and eating at our local businesses who would be generously giving back a large portion to a great, great cause. And if you have not done so, please download the app at thinkalocal.com. That's think with the letter N, local.com. And this is where you'll be uploading your receipts. Thank you again, Kevin, for your time. And to everyone, thanks for tuning in. Have a successful day. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you all.